Bob, the two great revolutions of the 20th century in physics, relativity and quantum theory, totally changed our understanding of what reality is. Many people feel that that's kind of it. We'll have a lot of things we have to discover, but there's going to be nothing that fundamental, that significant a difference between what we previously thought and what we, we now realize to be true. How, how do you see that? Do you see some additional revolutions of that magnitude as possible? Uh, yes. Now, possible is different from on the horizon. Mm -hmm. It is my job as a scientist to be an arch conservative when it comes to new things. And I've invented a few new things, and some of them have passed muster, and mm -hmm. others have not. So I had trial by fire on this. However, when you're dealing with nature, it's always good to bet on the side of the unexpected. Everybody who's been a professional scientist will tell you mm -hmm. this. Now, you say of the magnitude of, yes. of uh, quantum physics and relativity, um, I don't see any such revolution on the horizon right now, but then neither did people in 1890 <laughs> when relativity was just about to be born. The symptoms of this are very Kuhnian, as you know, they're, they're crises, and we have lots of crises in physics. Unfortunately, most of them are fake. Okay? They, they melt away, but some have the potential for being seeds of revolutions. Now, what are some of those? Um, well, the ones that are most immediate have to do with very small things. The, the bridge from the physical sciences into the life sciences not, has not been built, mm -hmm. even though we keep talking about it. The, the proteins seem to live in a never-never land between, between quantum mechanics on the one hand and mm -hmm. Newtonian classical physics on the other. It's v very hard to get your finger on. Uh, so that hasn't been bridged. And, and at the, of course, the very, very small, we're looking at, we're looking at new accelerator technologies. Now, uh, those have much farther to go, maybe not on Earth, but fundamentally, those machines have been gold mines when it comes to understanding the very small. And there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that there's more stuff down there to find. So I like to make a joke, as long as we're spending other people's money, I want those machines built. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there would be revolutions on the scale of, of, of quantum theory and relativity, where, where would you look for it to occur, even if you don't know where it is and it's not on the horizon? You know, actually, my, my colleagues working on the quantum gravity problem have got the right problem. We know that the quantum mechanics of general relativity does not work. And people are trying to guess what the might, right answer might be, but it's, uh, it's very, very difficult. Uh, the reconciliation of those two things uh, is bound to give you something really neat. I personally think it will require an experiment to, to, uh, to do it. But regardless, that's something you can look forward to, definitely. So, so that's, that, in my view, shows good taste. So that's a direction, but we're not sure what form mm -hmm. that will take, obviously. Do you see it uh, affecting fundamental things like the nature of space-time itself? Yes, because the relativistic description of space is, as I explained, very simple. It it's, has almost no moving parts. And so whatever is failing at the black hole horizon isn't a small thing. It's a great big thing, something monstrously large. And uh, yes, I think when that problem is solved, it will, it will, the scales will drop from people's eyes. I also mentioned the very small. And then there are all sorts of collective things that we're finding on the borders of chemistry. They aren't life, but their, their potential uses for engineering are very great. 
Now, the potential keeps receding, unfortunately. It's, it's one of those things that's hard to grasp. Nonetheless, my intuition tells me there's something there organizationally. The, the world of emergent phenomena or emergent things growing out of other emergent things and so forth, uh, we've only scratched the surface of that. So that's interesting because most people, if they consider major revolutionary breakthroughs, always look smaller and smaller down to the Planck length and looking at quantum foam and space-time foam and at that level. And you're saying, yeah, that's, that's good, but there may be also the same kind of revolutionary stuff at a much higher level, the, the, the emergent properties. Absolutely. Um, there are tons of things in ordinary matter that we can't make sense of. Something, in fact, that we have new tools that are finding this, this very strange micro scale organization that happens in materials that uh, nobody dreamed was there. It has nothing to do with atomic motion, it's all electronic, and nobody has the foggiest idea how to describe it. And what you're saying, I mean, I want to be clear, is that the, the potential explanation for those anomalies or uncertainties could be as significant in our fundamental understanding as relativity and quantum theory were. It, at oh, that I understand level. what you mean. Uh, well, my guess is no. Those things are chemistry. Uh, I personally find chemistry fascinating, and quantum mechanics, as we know it, is not very helpful for understanding yeah. chemistry. But uh, probably not, no. So my, my bet would be on the gravity problem on the one hand, um, and the um, the borderline with living things on the other. Now, having said that, um, nature is full of surprises. Okay, Mark Twain once said that the truth is always stranger than fiction because fiction is forced to stick to possibilities, <laughs> but truth is not.